chapter nine, tools to help lessen your stress. Be grateful for the tests, difficulties, and challenges you are going through because it's preparing you for the next level in your breakthrough. The ability to communicate was often one of my, the biggest challenges I had. My imperfect, persistent propensity for stuttering was a great source of stress. It often distracted me from focusing on the conversation. I'm sure it distracted others. I would not be able, and to this day am a unable, to listen to a lengthy statement, however important it is to me to find out the answer to my question. I often have to ask people to repeat, spell things for me, and use my cell phone notes section as someone dictates the address, date, etc. as I'm unable to depend on getting that accurately placed on my electronic calendar when I feel pressured. I often felt misunderstood and that was a completely emotionally draining experience. I can remember leaving the doctor's office and remembering after I was almost home that I had forgotten to bring up things that were on my mind. This occurred often as I was not prepared for our visit. In this chapter, I would like to offer some suggestions for things that will help you keep focused and cope with your stress and be open for answers. Over time, I discovered that there were several things that would have been of help if I had had them at my disposal from the onset. This is a list of tools that work for me. Proper reading glasses, so you don't strain and make your brain stress. Computer glasses to block out the light and prevent overstimulation that is counterproductive for healing. Sunglasses, a paper shredder to help keep your desk area clear of clutter. A paper planner, a physical calendar that cannot electronically disappear. The action of writing helps things stick in your mind too. This is one of the few reasons why children need to be provided practice learning to read and write without a computer. A printer. Print out emails that are important to respond to. Use the printout to make notes on before responding. I needed to be able to do this often, otherwise the email would get lost in my inbox. I could often forget to respond or worse, I would return send and it would go to my drafts. Doing things this way methodically helps a lot. Once you've printed it out and reflected, you can return one complete response. If I did not make notes, I would end up returning a series of emails or a string of thoughts and I was bombarding the individual. Create whatever system you find to work for you. Hands on paper and pen help me organize my thoughts. I've had to print out every edit of this book to be able to accurately see what I've written. Sticky notes are wonderful for organizing and reminding and are easy to carry in a stack. They are also great for errand lists and groceries and are easily moved around a planner so you don't end up with a crossed out mess. Throw the note away as the memo is accomplished. A three ring binder with plastic insertable pages works well for paper organization of physical bills and important papers, such as information provided to you by your doctor and therapist. Utilize dividers to create sections. Help eliminate a stack of paper to constantly sift through. Sticky notes adhere well and stay on the inside of the plastic insertable page. I use this to note how and when the bill was paid. An essential oil diffuser. The following essential oils are high in sesquerpertines, which increase delivery of oxygen to the brain and therefore are helpful for brain injured individuals. Cedarwood, vetiver, sandalwood, patchouli, myrrh, ginger, lang lang, helichrysum, melissa, and frankincense. As of this writing, I'm only a fan of one particular brand of essential oil as I know it to be the only product of its kind that I know to be third-party tested for purity. Prismacolor pencils. You may be wondering why I feel so 
enthusiastic about Prism of Color pencils. I love these. Teaching art for 20 years allowed me to experience many different types of art materials. I always bought these for my students, despite the hefty price tag. The pigments are rich and dense. You can layer and blend. They are the best colored pencil I've ever used. A small line journal for writing. Keeping track of your daily thoughts is helpful for relieving stress, organizing your thoughts, reflecting upon your wins, and keeping track of your goals. A small hardbound plain page journal for using your colored pencils. I prefer the hardbound drawing journal as I feel that what I'm drawing is something that I wish to keep in order, a record like a journal. Your colored scribbles are important. Use shapes and create fun abstract designs to express your feelings. Have a lot of fun with this. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Let the colors inspire you. As a former art educator, I know that you have a lot of ideas to share. 20 years in the classroom with thousands of students proved to me that everyone has a unique and exceptional mind. Do not be afraid to use yours with this safe activity. You don't need to share it with anyone. Just have fun. It can be a great release. I also have written on the back of each design the date and what I felt at the time. It's my visual diary. A prompt sheet of words that are feelings. This is very helpful for communicating with your doctor and others. Before a visit, look at the list and write down all the words that apply to you for that week or day. Bring these words with you so you don't forget to mention these things. Your thoughts and your concerns are important to share. The people who are trying to help you will be grateful for that information. A prompt sheet that says at the top, I am feeling blank today because something happened. Use this prompt and plug in either a feeling or a symptom word. The prompt sheet listing symptoms you are currently experiencing. Don't we like that? A prompt sheet listing symptoms you are currently experiencing. The purpose of the symptom prompts is to provide you time to reflect without pressure before going to your doctor or therapist. You're able to bring them to your appointment, which will allow you to not forget those things that have been on your mind. And as an aside, I have created a booklet that you can order and you can use this for half a year's time to help you better communicate with your doctors, therapists, teachers, family, friends. It's really cool. Anyway, I digress. A three ring binder with the clear insert pages is useful for keeping important papers at hand, such as insurance communications, a section with monthly bill statements, and a section for medical communications. I use the sticky notes with this method. I write on the note when I paid the bill, then stick it inside the plastic sleeve where it can be easily seen. This way I can flip through this book of important info and quickly find what I need and what I've done. You may want to devote one page to passwords. I would advise the notes here too. I've had to change my passwords frequently as I have not had a record of them with me when needed. And then the paper password keeper book became a scrambled mess of distraction, frustration, and time wasted. Cell phones are helpful for many activities. I used mine to help me remember where I parked. Take a picture of your car where it is, where it is before going into a store. Use the notes app on your phone to keep a shopping list or the name and description of someone you need to contact when you get home. I now have my email on my phone, which is helpful for keeping current throughout the day and for sharing photos and files. I couldn't have managed this initially post-injury. I also have my name, address, and phone number in the contacts section. This makes it easy to share when I meet people who request my information. I used my cell phone camera every day. It was a self-imposed assignment. Finding a picture and posting it on Facebook with a quote fulfilled my creative urge while not being too physically or mentally draining. It was fun and having fun's important. Classes. 
my children gave me an incredible gift, which helped me, which helped counteract the alienation I experienced. They rented me a studio space where I could use clay. This was a familiar activity and the revisiting of that memory and skill brought much peace and a renewed sense of accomplishment into my upside down world. Is there anything that you have wanted to revisit and could now that you have the gift of time? If there is a class that you've been thinking might be fun, do it. I took a three-day fly fishing course. And although at the time I could not sit in the bright room for long during the presentations or remember much that was being said, I had a great time learning how to roll cast and in great in engaging in brief interactions. I'm a kinesthetic visual learner. There are ways to insert yourself into a group if you feel isolated. Check out the local social activities pages on social media. Find those people who are doing what you would like to be doing and join them. Finally, I would also encourage you to provide permission to two people who you trust to be able to communicate with your doctors about you. My son said that that was one of the most frustrating things for him as he had no idea what was actually happening, nor could he ask the doctor. I was really a first class mess. I stuttered, repeated myself and could not remember basic information such as what I had done two hours before, the day before, or what I was supposed to do. The list is endless. All this time, most everyone thought that I was fine because I looked fine. It's a difficult injury to evaluate. Traumatic brain injuries bring on all different types of dysfunction. I recommend that you consider giving your doctor permission to speak with someone on your behalf. Know that this can be changed at any time. You're in charge. I wish that I had done this so my family had a better understanding of what my challenges and needs were. Always ask your doctor to provide you with your record for each visit. That way, you can reflect yourself if you have not designated anyone to be part of the process. It gets tiresome trying to explain things, and this creates more stress. I think you know by now how stress is not helpful in traumatic brain injury recovery. Before a doctor or therapist appointment, use your word list and link below to jog your mind before the appointment. It may, be help, it may be difficult to keep track of everything you are experiencing between appointments, and it's often easy to become distracted and forgetful as to what you may need to discuss once you are with your doctor. Sometimes pleasantries get in the way of business. Refer to your journal, your notebook, or your sticky notes that you've created since last seeing this professional then date a page in your journal and write it all out. List everything that you're experiencing. The link provided here by the Hoffman Institute offers a, a list of descriptive feeling words. And at the bottom in a rectangle, there are more symptom words. Choose some words that, are, that accurately describe the way you are feeling that day or the way you have felt since you last saw your doctor, therapist, Etc. Then place the words in the sentence. I am feeling emotion, feeling such as sad, anxious, happy, angry, because, and then the reason for that feeling, event, condition, such as I was unable to, I forgot to, I had difficulty with, something happened, and would like to know possible solutions available to help. Then list your symptom words. Those will be the physical things you are experiencing as different from your previous normal. These are things that are off-putting and currently a challenge. Then remember to bring your journal or your piece of paper in your planner with you to the appointment. This will be of great help in making your time productive and in allowing your concerns to be completely addressed. Your doctor will be grateful for the help and you will be grateful for having been heard. Then I list all the symptoms and I will put those below this video. 
I'd like to thank you for listening to me read you my book, Heal Your TBI. And I'll look forward to bringing you some interviews with people who are currently experiencing their concussions, their traumatic brain injuries, and what they're going through, and some of the solutions that are working for them so that you can better understand and accept the challenge that's before you. I wish you all the very best. Your brain's neuroplasticity is truly amazing, and you can heal yourself with the help of healthcare professionals, friends, family, support people, your coaches. You've got this.